The question is goals. How do you um, how do you get it together that you have a goal like SAVA does blindness work, and do it? Uh, how do you, where does it come from, and how do you live with it, or how do you deal with it in a non-attached way? Uh, because uh, like the Bhagavad Gita says, be not attached to the fruits of the action, which is one of the interesting ones. To have a goal and work towards it without being attached to how it comes out is an interesting uh, challenge. For example, I come here to speak. I come here to share Dharma. I do it as well as I can. What effect it has is what effect it has. My attachment to what happens to you is almost nil. What happens to you is what happens to you. That's your predicament. If I get caught in what happens to you, I'll burn out. All right, so my job is not to do that. Now, um, I ended up in the blind, this is interesting, because the only, Seva came to be because a group of people got rid of smallpox in Southeast Asia, worked together to do that. They got very juiced from it, from doing that exciting venture together. They wanted to keep working together. They wanted to back this woman who had been their boss, who was a Swiss doctor. She said she wanted to work on blindness. So in order to go on, they created a foundation and they happened to invite me onto the board. Suddenly there I was working on blindness and I thought, I have no specific brief for this. I mean, there's lots of suffering in the world. Why pick this? And then I looked and I realized it didn't matter. It didn't matter that I found myself through a set of circumstances in this situation where I was working to end blindness. And that became, and I see most of my life that way. I see it as an unfolding of just a set of happenings leading to this and to that in which I seem to have a goal it's the way Don Juan talks about you huff and you puff and you make believe it matters even though you know that it doesn't. And that's the paradox you have to struggle with. That you know from another level there's nothing really to do at all. It's all unfolding perfectly. And at the same moment you seem to have goals, you seem to have objects, you seem to be doing it. And you do it with, with impeccability and with commitment and yet with a lightness and a non-attachment to how it comes out. And that's quite an art form. It's quite an art form. So I would say that, I, that it's an intuitive process in which you end up doing one thing and not another. Right? We, the way we do it in Seva is just whatever anybody's heart moves them to. They come to the board and they say, I was in Guatemala and I was in this village and all these, everybody over 15, all the men over 15 have been murdered. And I went to the women and I said, what do you need? And they said, we need sheeps and goats. And I said, I'll do what I can. And I came, they, and this woman that did it came back to the board and she said, this is what happened to me, and I want to give them sheeps and goats. So we said, well, okay, let's help. And that's how it happens. The heart leads it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Choosing among goals. Yeah. See, the interesting thing is, when you say about choosing, if you're talking from a spiritual point of view, the answer is it doesn't matter. That's the one that's hard, because from a rational point of view and a psychological point of view, it matters. Somebody comes up to me and says, should I marry or not? I said, it doesn't make any difference. And they say, well, it makes a difference to me. And I, yeah, I understand that. But you've got to see that from a spiritual point of view, if you feel you're at a choice point, if you do one, the part of you that didn't do the other is still around to work with. If you do the other, I mean, you're caught in either way. Choice points show you that you have karma both ways or you have attachments both ways. And the not getting it and the getting it both will teach you from a spiritual point of view. So in the, in the, from a spiritual point of view, it doesn't matter, which lightens the load considerably. Because otherwise, you can sit at choice points and drive yourself up the wall. So I always figure if I've got a choice, I must be standing at the wrong place. Why don't I just quiet down, empty, and listen to hear how it came out? And the worst that'll happen is I'll flip a coin. I'll decide whether to marry or not. 